Hello, today we're going to finish off the box we started last week by giving it a sliding lid. I've just been doing some preparation on the top for our box. You haven't missed anything because I'm preparing it exactly the same as I did for the base of the box, except that I'm leaving it long and I'm not putting rebates in the ends. I've cut a rebate down each of the sides in the same way that I did for the base leaving the material in between just loosely fitting in between the sides of the box. What we're going to do now is mark for and cut some grooves in the sides of the box so that we can slide the top in from one end. When we made the grooves for the base uh, we positioned them so that the panel would be flush with the bottom of the box. For the top as a little design feature, I'd like the top to be slightly raised above the sides, so I'll be putting the groove a little bit closer to the top edge. I'll take my marking gauge and I'm going to set it a little bit less than the depth of the rebate. That will mark the top of the groove in the sides. Now I need to make the groove the right width to take the little tongue that's been left on the sides of the top. So I'll mark that with a knife to begin with. Use that to set my gauge. I'll mark that on the sides. Whilst we've got that setting on the gauge, that's the setting which will show where the bottom of the lid is and so that is the amount of material we need to take off one of the ends so that we can slide the lid in. So we can mark one end to cut off. I'm cutting these grooves in exactly the same way as I did the ones for the base. If you've extended your tool collection to a thin chisel, then you can perhaps clean out the bottom of your groove with that. So putting it back together again. Now with a bit of luck. Now we need to mark for length. And I want to cut it back to just where this rebate is on the ends of the sides. I'll mark that. We'll mark it just a little bit long, prepare it a little bit long and then we can plane off from the other end until we get a lovely snug fit. So I'm going to cut through here, but I'm only going to cut through as deep as the tongues that we created on the sides. Then I'm going to use the cut off from the end of the box to glue onto the rebate we prepare on this end of the lid. It should become clear as I do it. So the first job is to score a line for length. Then I'm going to add the cut off from the end against the tri-square and score a line against that which is the total length that we want the lid to be. So we'll cut this section off 
right through the board and this section here will just saw down to the lips that we've got on either side. To rebate for the end that we're going to stick in here we need to saw down from the top just missing the tongs at each end. And there's a little bit of clean up to do, but that's where we'll be sticking the piece we cut off from the end. And that fits lovely. So now that I've done that, there's just a couple of more details we need to take care of before we can glue the whole thing up. First of all, you see how the lid is higher than the sides. That's a little design detail I chose. But rather than having a sharp edge there, I'm just going to take a few shavings with the plane at an angle so that there's a, a nice bevel. At the other end of the box, you can see that this section that we cut off from the top of this end is a little bit too proud. It's higher than the sides and it's higher than the top. So we need to plane it down so it's level with the sides. So I'll start by just marking that with the knife. And that will give me an idea of where I've got to go to. If you didn't build one of these little bench hook shooting boards that I showed earlier in the series, you'll wish you had. Planing something as small as this can be really quite difficult. Uh, I think you can see I've knifed in the line which shows the final thickness I need. All I need to do now is use a square bit of timber against the hook. I can hold that piece of wood just off the edge of the shooting board there. Lay my plane on its side and just take shavings by pressing against it and moving forward. It's very awkward to work on something that small in any other way. And that's it done. Now to put the little bevel around the top. You can do it with a chisel. if you're careful. But on something this small it's probably easier to wrap some sandpaper around a block and just sand it. It won't take very long. That's how I do the end grain anyway. For the long grain I should be able to plane and these come in this direction according to the grain it's taking a very thin shaving if you make a bigger box you should be able to plane that quite easily so let's put it back together for a final check before we glue it up And I think that's looking quite nice. First of all we need to glue this section on. If I glue it in whilst the lid's in place, then I can slide it out to dry and glue up the rest of the box. Two or three spring clamps is ideal. If you haven't got clamps yet, two or three closed pegs work just as well. For the main box, just before we glue up, it's worthwhile sanding the inside because that will be very difficult afterwards. Sanding blocks can be a real temptation and in the right place they are very useful, 
but on small work like this where we want to maintain relatively sharp corners uh, these do tend to round those off so my preference is a piece of MDF or similar which is nice and hard and then simply wrap that round with some sandpaper then you've got a nice solid surface with which to sand an alternative when you're working on small parts is to put a sheet of sandpaper I'm sorry this is a rough old one but uh, get yourself a new flat sheet of sandpaper tape it down onto the bench top or something else that's flat and then you can simply rub your parts on that for gluing the main box up do a practice run work out how you're going to clamp it and get yourself something nice and flat like this uh, piece of melamine coated uh, chipboard that's not always flat by the way so check it with a straight edge a few different angles just to make sure there are no gaps underneath and no bumps I'm using elastic bands here which are perfectly okay for doing this I've put a couple of blocks of wood in the ends because we've recessed the ends into the sides there's a possibility that the sides might be very slightly longer in which case it, if we just had the rubber bands around there it wouldn't be pressing the ends in nice and firmly so a couple of blocks on the ends three rubber bands I've got here I've found that this corner isn't pulling up really nice and tight as I'd like it to so I've put the third rubber band on and once it's glued and in place I just put an extra block in the side here give it a stretch, twist it round and put a bit more tension on that band and just trying that I can see that it's pulled it nice and tight so let's get some glue on here and get it stuck together and remember we don't want the base to be stuck at all that wants to float free so let's put some glue on the end grain first of all this helps to seal up the end grain because it doesn't stick very well on its own it sucks all the moisture out of the glue as soon as you put it on there for the sides we want to get glue into the rebate and again avoid both of those grooves and just before I put it all together a bit of glue on the outside edges of the ends that are going to be tucked up in the rebates and then we can put it together remember that the rebate wants to face down in the box so we get a flush bottom press it down nice and firm, pull everything together pop the little cools that we're using at both ends and get a band on just check with the little square inside that, you're, that all the sides are square that's great I've left that for about 10 minutes and I've just come back with a, a damp paper towel wrapped around a, a sharp stick and I can just get down into the corners and clean out any of the glue that's left now I'll leave that for a few hours for the glue to really go off and here's the finished box Join me next time when I'll take a look at finishing this box with a polish.